Welcome to another timely episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 304, recorded Sunday, January 31st, 2021. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a new movie called Synchronic. Uh, This is our uh, first new release we're going to be talking about of the year, so strap in. Before we get down to it, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got our boy, Randy Gandy, G. Landy. What's up, man? Hello, gentlemen. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Well, I recently learned that a gentleman must know the difference between velvet and velveteen. Uh, (laughs) I I see. I mean... I mean, I am a gentleman, so I have, I'm under no such restrictions. So Fantastic. I, I haven't been hanging out with the Gilbert crowd myself, but you know, more for you, I guess. <laughs> you must not be a sinner then, sir. So. <laughs> they uh, always look good. They always look good. It's really, really a smart idea to open our episode with a really idiosyncratic <laughs> King of the Hill reference. <laughs> yeah, it's what the people want. Uh, last but not least, calling in from the Jacksonville, Florida, we got our boy, Juice. What's up, man? What up, bitch, your boy, Conquistador Stains? <laughs> Ariba. Going back in time. Conquista Stain. Yeah, we got a lot of time travel these past couple weeks. True. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't realize that was what the conceit was going to be for this one. <laughs> yeah, January starting off, lots of time travel. Even, even the fervor had a little kind of time travel in it's it. It's almost as if people want to not live in the time we're living in for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Why <laughs> would they want that? Stick. I just don't know. Just weird. <laughs> uh, oh, boys. Talking about synchronic. Yeah, Justin boy. Vincent, Aaron Moorhead. What yeah. are they? What are they up to these days? They give me the horrible. They give you the horrible. <laughs> I think that's intended. Uh, I don't before know. Uh, before we get into the main event, let's tackle some housekeeping real quick. Uh, so we got a new month starting tomorrow. That means we're ending a poll and we're starting a new poll. All right. Um, Juice, why don't you round out this month's poll? Uh, You chose the topic in three movies. What were they? All right, so this is the last day of January. So it should be closing out. And this was my pick. This is something new we are doing this year. Each month, we will each get our own uh, pick, which means we get to pick all three movies in the poll. Um, I went first, and I chose Thrillers, and I chose Seven um old boy and no country for old mangs and bob how how's that going to close out uh old boy's going to take it old bish is the winner he has been on top the whole month so no surprise there bob do you want to go ahead and announce what next month's poll is going to be absolutely what's going to be bob uh our march poll pick theme is going to be adult animated horror movies whoa Triple X adult, right, Bob? That's what I'm talking. That's not really what we're going for, but just we're shit going for you... the Rule 34 audience this week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. 18 plus for these. I don't know what that is. Do you want to enlighten me, or should we just continue? Is it fucked up? Rule 34. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, that's that's. It's now one of the oldest memes on the web, which says that if you can think, if you can imagine a pornography drawn of it. It will be made, and it's primarily <laughs> people doodling non-sexual characters in really explicit positions. Gotcha. Uh, it's it's no bueno for me, but uh, you know, pe- no kink shame. People no doing their, shame. their 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 kooky arts. So let us know power about to it them. In As a man who wants to draw Goofy with a rad kicking male bod, I can't really, I don't really have much uh, <laughs> much to say on the subject. You guys remember that one? That was one of my favorites. I don't, I don't remember, remember that. One. Uh, <laughs> You don't remember that? You still got no. it. Goofy had a kicking. 
humanoid bot. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, it's on the Sonic Graham Insta. Is it? All right, nice. Oh yeah, we'll do it. All right. Um, yeah, Rule Thirty Four, so, baby. <laughs> the uh, yeah, we're talking about adult animated horror movies uh, for the month of March, and the three movies you're going to be able to vote between are Akira, Forbidden Planet, and Wicked City. Okay, I can't ask you how this numbers look because it's not live yet. True. So, that will be live by time you are listening to this cast, probably. Yeah, right? most likely. Yeah. Go live Febu- or, sorry, March. No, February first. February. Go live February first. <laughs> February 1st. Uh, yeah, and that's up on our Patreon website. It is exclusive to our Patreon members. If you want to vote, uh, support us at the five dollar level or above, and you will be able to do that. And we we'll get some stickers and a shouts out, all kinds of cool shit on our Patreon website. Nice. Um, speaking of other cool shit on our Patreon website, if you support us at the ten dollar level or above, you get access to exclusive content that is only available on Patreon. Uh, we've been releasing a shitload of mini casts. Um, I think we're we're pushing thirty on there now. And if you do sign up, you get uh, wow. you get emailed an RSS feed that you can drop into your podcatcher of choice and listen to all of those bonus episodes um, on you know Spotify or you know, Google Play or wherever you listen to your podcast. You know, you don't have to listen to them. Just we out here just on. data mining our own brains for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get on our Patreon. Yeah. Bob, what is your podcast? Suck the marrow straight choice. from our opinions. <laughs> I just listen to uh, Apple Podcasts usually. Okay. That's Bob's podcatcher. Yeah, I, I'm really more Randy. Of, I'm really more of a pod pitcher myself. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Randy, you're so nasty. Uh, but anyway. Dropping tomorrow on our Patreon website. Juice, you got a mini cast. What are you talking about? New mini cast for the hashtag Hard with the Squad. This is going to be about the new Netflix docuseries um, Night Stalker. Um, this is something um, that came out just a couple weeks ago and it is um, pretty solid. It, um, oh God, what's, I am blanking on the name. Richard, Richard Ramirez. Bar- yeah, Ramirez. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Richard Ramirez, um, killing people in the mid 80s out in LA, um, also known as the uh, Night Stalker. And just, well, it's, La Vida. yeah, it's a pretty much the hunt for him. Um, they focus more on the cops that were kind of chasing him, the detectives, and their, their kind of experience with it. But they do go into some surprisingly gruesome details about the murders themselves and i'm talking about like crime scene photos and stuff um so it's um it was interesting there was a lot of details that i was not aware of um he i mean he's a pretty you know like famous serial killer like in america but there were some details and aspects that weren't included in his overall like trials that involved like children in a way because ultimately they knew they were going to get a conviction on the murders themselves and so they just didn't pursue it so yeah it's but they go into like detail about it's man this even in just the murders it's some of the darkest stuff i've ever seen or heard it's 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 terrible honestly so that's going up on our uh, i know i am reviewing just the docu series yes i am makes reviewing perfect the sense series. to make him a character in fucking american horror story yeah that shit 1984 <laughs> was pretty cool for the most part but i did yeah. not like that they brought him into that, that i agree for some actually reason. Why? There's no need. There's plenty going on. Pl- they My had a first reaction killer. was like, oh, weird, cool. But then like after a minute of thinking about it, you're like, yeah, but fucking people died because of this fuck. Do we really yeah. want to be doing this? Oh, yeah. And they had, like, they created a slasher. They already had a villain, and then they just yeah. brought him in. For, it's like, what they the had, hell? Why? Yeah. Now we are reviewing story is <laughs> never con- Yeah, yeah. American, American Horror Story is just never Sorry. content to stick to one track. They have to go in every possible yeah. direction at, any, at all times. I don't True. get it. Bit of a but I did kind of like that season overall. Anyway, I, different I conversation. <laughs> um, so yeah, another Patreon news. We do have one new brand brand new Patreon supporter. We got to give some shouts outs to. A uh, big thank you to Justin G for signing up and showing us some love on Patreon. Um, every dollar you guys contribute goes right back into the show. We really do appreciate it. it. Helps us keep the lights on. And as always around these parts, we owe Justin G the old straight chilling salute. This one is for Justin. Slap me in the ass. Slap me in the ass. All right. Um, that's all we got for Patreon juice. You got a YouTube 
YouTube stuff? Yep. Yeah, uh, one more thing um, for housekeeping. Uh, we are headed into a new month. So by the time you're listening to this, it should be February. And that means we have a new Top 5 Tuesday coming up. First Tuesday of every month, we have a new YouTube video popping up, a Top 5 list. This month, it's going to be Top 5 Japanese Horror Films. So we've covered a couple different, or maybe Korea so far, on the Top 5 lists on YouTube. But um, on February, I guess, 2nd, uh, we will be dropping a new YouTube video that's some exclusive content on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com forward slash straight chilling podcast. And we announced it last week, but again, something we are doing that might um, be kind of special for this week. This is a new movie that we're covering this week, um, Synchronic. And so for all of our um, new YouTube videos, uh, the behind the scenes and the regular podcasts, uh, we will have a link to buy these movies in Amazon um, if you are interested in purchasing this physical media. And you should. Be. Wow. Yeah. And so that link will be um, at the top mm-hmm. of the description in all of our new videos so far. So if you are interested in picking up Synchronic, it'll be there for you. Yeah. Um, if you want to pick it up, there's also an alternate ending included on the disc and a commentary know, yeah. by the uh, the directors slash writers. Uh, we'll talk about that alternate ending here. Yeah, we watched it literally like five minutes before yeah. <laughs> you called in because we were like, oh, shit, we didn't know about this. Yeah, what's, what's that about? Fuck. It's real quick. It's real quick. Yeah. I'm out of the loop. We got I'm just going to we... talk about Bordello of Blood again. Yeah, that, that follows. <laughs> cool. Um, I think that's all we got. I believe this house is clean. This house is clean. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into the main event. We're talking about Synchronic, and we're going to kick it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? (laughs) Well? Well, I do have it right here. I know you got that box, Bob. I got it. Is there anything? You have the slipcase, Rob. Rob, I do. slipcase. Oh, thank God. Thank the Blu-ray guys. I thought you were going to have to burn it. (laughs) No, I got it. Um, so yeah, Synchronic uh, just came out this year, uh, starring Anthony Mackie and Jamie Dornan. Old oh, Jamie Dornan. Uh, the plot synopsis is as follows. When New Orleans paramedics and longtime best friends Steve and Dennis are called to a series of bizarre, gruesome accidents, they chalk it up to the mysterious new party drug found at the scene. But after Dennis's oldest daughter suddenly disappears, Steve stumbles upon a terrifying truth about the the supposed psychedelic that will challenge everything he knows about reality and the flow of time itself. Gasp. There you go. I did did like you asked. (laughs) Uh, Joe Mangs, had you seen this movie before and would you recommend people check it out? Randy? Uh, No, um, I actually, I don't think I was aware of this movie at all. Um, If I was, it was very, very loosely maybe just from like side convos or whatever. Um, but ha- I did watch the trailer in advance and I was pretty stoked to watch it. And having now seen it, I would say that, yeah, that the trailer is not one, one-to-one what you're going to get, but I would say that it's it's a pretty fair assessment of the movie considering you know what they have to conceal and what they have to show about what the movie's about. So um, I would say if you like the trailer, you'll probably like the movie, all right. Cool. Juice, what about you? Um, I remember talking about this movie um, being made when we covered their last film, which was pretty new at the time, The Endless, um, because I remember um, we were like, oh, the Falcon's going to be in it. That's a big actor. He's in the MCU and shit. So, Mr. um, Falcon. Mr. Falcon. Um, So I was aware of it. It's, It's pretty new, so I hadn't seen it before. I watched it this week. And um, watched it with a little thin mint cream. Talking about a little screaming and creaming real quick. Ooh, up on the Instagram. For now I'm creaming. Very true. <laughs> yeah, um, just a little uh, plug there. Uh, but I, so I know last year we were covering new movies and we kept putting out this caveat like, you know, there's not a lot of new movies getting released this year. So, you know, some movies that felt pretty medium got a little bump maybe because of that. Mm. I anticipate, hopefully, I'm hoping, by the end of 2021, when this year is wrapping up and we're making our top 10 list, I 
anticipate that this movie will mostly be forgotten. Um, <laughs> like, and, and that's it's 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 fine. Like it's good enough, but I don't think it's going to have a distinct impression on me by the time this year is done. Mm-hmm. And I don't anticipate anticipate it making my top ten. I could be wrong. Oh, monster. I, possibly, I could be wrong. I'm not so. Um, but it was it was okay. It was fine. It was an okay way to kick off the year. But I'm like I wouldn't say it's a must watch by any means. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of where I stand on it. Bob, what do you think? I think I feel similarly. Um, this movie, like if we're talking top 10 of this year, whatever that's going to look like, hopefully we get a lot more new releases uh, than we did last year. But this is probably not going to make my top 10 either, if I had to guess. Um, it might be like an honorable mention because I, I did, I think it's worth watching, especially if you like time travel movies. Like if you've seen the other Benson Moorhead movies and you're into those, I think you'll like this. It's, it's, as far as I understand, like all the, all of their movies are supposed to exist in like the same sort of shared universe. Like you don't really have like repeat characters or anything like that, but, uh, they play around with like time travel quite a bit in their movies and, uh, they all sort of exist and play by the same rules. So if you like those, you'll probably like this. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I would recommend it, yeah, but it's probably not going to blow your mind in half or anything. I have a quick question. I don't know if you yeah. guys can answer this or not. So this movie just came out uh, in wide release, I guess. But I see a lot of places it listed as being a 2019 film. Is that? Yeah. So is that just because it was delayed or what, do we know what the deal is with that? Yeah, I, I think it was originally supposed to come out last fall, I want to say. But also like that 2019 number, like whenever you reference IMDb, usually the year it says that it, it came out, it's like the year it premiered at film festivals and isn't oh, okay. necessarily its wide release date. Right. So like, yeah, this, I think this was available wide on VOD maybe a month ago and it just got a physical release um, this this last Tuesday. So it's it's now wide and, and easy to find for everybody. Yeah. Time makes fools of us all. Yeah, time keeps on slipping into the future you know time Fucking goes hate. by and it goes, <laughs> it goes on. on we are just connecting dots now. <laughs> time time by the way i think this movie, yeah. I think this movie we'll get there. <laughs> how many songs <laughs> this is a free association podcast now yeah. I, I, here's another thing I, you guys kept talking about if th- this might not make your top 10 I don't know like I can't even begin to guess because last year was such an anomaly and I'm not sure that we'll recover from that anomaly in time for the end of the year but whether or not we do like I think this would have stood a pretty good chance last year of making my top 10 yeah. in 2020 yeah it would have hovered I'm thinking it would have hovered I, I'm not it. thinking too hard about that but I feel yeah. like like with a one like I had like four or five new movies that didn't make the list period. So I feel sure, like it's, yeah. it's a shallow pool to pick from. I think out of the, the dog shit that was left behind, this would definitely <laughs> at least be middling, you know, it's, it has yeah. a shot, but it still would have been toward the back end, even for last year. It wouldn't have been I top think. five for me, but I think it yeah. could have been the top 10. Yeah, maybe clench a number nine or eight spot maybe. We're basically reviewing this thing now let's go on right. yeah uh <laughs> so let's yeah that sounds like a, a pretty decent recommend across the board from us uh let's go ahead and drop that spoiler warning and we'll get into the rest of the movie here we go spoiler warning I do have a plot synopsis typed up here. It's pretty short. Is it cleaner than last week, last Bob? Week. Yeah, last week. Keep was, it clean, Rob. This is a family difficult. fucking podcast. All right? It is a piece not. of shit. You're ruled forty three or whatever. whatever the fuck. Oh my! Oh. Nothing makes me feel more like a sex pest than just being honest on this podcast. Yeah, that's. I actually was just saying the same thing. I was like, Randy's our deviant for sure, <laughs> Mister Chatterbait, Mister. I'm sorry that I'm aware sexy, of the world. Sexy, you guys, goofy. you guys enjoy your bubbles. I'm gonna live in the goddamn real world. All right? I'm just being real. They call me real Randy over here. <laughs> Ah, you two chaste gentlemen who have never touched a wiener, even your own. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 
Flop, how about that flop synopsis? Yeah. Uh, so here is the full plot synopsis for Synchronic. Uh, we got Steve and Dennis, two paramedics working in present day New Orleans. Uh, there's a new designer drug called Synchronic that's causing many locals to die in gruesome ways. Steve eventually connects the drug to these violent deaths and buys out the remaining supply of Synchronic to keep people from consuming it. Dennis's daughter takes Synchronic one night with her friends and she ends up going missing. Uh, the doctor that created the drug breaks into Steve's house one night trying to retrieve the drugs that he bought out. Uh, Steve catches him. Uh, the doctor then tells Steve the drug allows people to experience time as it really is and not in the linear fashion humans typically experience time. Uh, Steve ends up taking the drug and travels back in time for seven minutes. Uh, he takes the drug several more times in different locations around his home. And he is performing like a kind of bunch of experiments to see exactly how this drug works. He's sent to different uh, times, uh, different eras in history. And um, he eventually realizes Dennis's daughter must be stuck back in time wherever she traveled to. Um, he tells Dennis all this. Um, and he sets out to find and retrieve Dennis's daughter. He does so, and in the process of doing that, he gets stuck uh, back in time and is unable to come home because he has run out of Synchronic. What is happening? What just happened? What? <laughs> Hello, check, check. What the fuck? Check. I'm good. Uh, something. I, I can hear not, you both. <laughs> I am not good. Well, that's because of our mic, Rob's personal mic. This is how the snossage is made. This is why you tune into the behind the scenes. So you can see us get pissed off. <laughs> so you can see Rob wrestle with his mic. Son shit, of a bitch. Shit. Well, yeah, I don't know, man. It might be the mic. Is it? Shit. Yeah. Let's see that on the cable. I'll change the mic out. This is how the sausage mm -hmm. is made. The mic that I've used for six years. You might have to listen to two flop synopsis. Let's see if this one works. That's weird. It just cut out. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this behind the scenes footage. I'm enjoying <laughs> I know you're watching. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my cherry. Check. Well, now who's the deviant? <laughs> Check. That's good. Hello. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right. I blew the mic out. Holy. You want to do the plot synopsis again? No, it's fine. It's fine. How long were you? I don't know when you cut out. It was like the last couple sentences. Uh, so yeah, just to finish that off real quick. Um, uh, yeah, Steve realizes that Dennis's daughter is stuck back in time wherever she happened to travel to. And he tells Dennis this, they sort of band together. Um, Steve goes back in time again to save Dennis's daughter. He is successful and brings her back. Um, and uh, he, is, he ends up getting stuck back in time and he runs out of Synchronic so he can never come home again. The end. Um, all right, let's talk about this movie. Please. In my, so, in my opinion, this has a, a cool premise, but, and I was intrigued. The problem is, I think the, the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of this movie have the best visualization of this idea and then also the most like intriguing aspect where it's kind of this big mystery about it where you start off where these different you start off with these kind of this younger couple they take it in a hotel one guy he goes into the elevator his girlfriend stays in the bed and they both go to these different places in time he's heading to this desert and he's kind of since he's in an elevator He's like falling through the sky. She goes to this jungle. There's like a snake and a like a, a, a guy with a spear. Um, and to me, like that was the most intriguing aspect of this where the guy ultimately he ends up like 
falling down the elevator shaft and just coming apart and she gets a snake bite is freaking out in her room and then as paramedics our two main characters they also explore another house that we don't see the visualizations of it but also the mystery and intrigue of they go into this house where they think people are just drugged out and one guy is has been stabbed with this like a spear or something or like a crazy pirate sword and then yeah, they go like yeah, and then they go to a theme park where somebody has been like burned up completely and um, they're holding like a door handle, an old timey looking like door handle or something. Th those were the like for this idea, how this movie ultimately plays out and the idea itself of the time travel is fine, but I felt like the best parts to me of of that idea and the visualization of it all really came in this like first 15 minutes. The rest of it fell pretty flat for me, honestly. Yeah. I'm, I wouldn't disagree with that. Like the, the concept behind it, like the idea that you back, go back in time for seven minutes in a unspecified time based on your physical location. Like I, I like all of that. Like I like the, the, the general rules but two things stick out to me. One is that some of those rules seem to be played a little fast and loose later on. And when your movie hinges so much on it, it's like the, the quiet place sort of thing where like they're hinging a lot on the exposition that they've given on how this works. Um, and some of it doesn't quite align for me, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, and then the other thing is that I don't know that the actual, like the human story being told doesn't seem to resonate with the concept at all to me like it like the idea that that uh, anthony mackie is in this movie as he's our lead we're following him around he has he's having two major issues one is that he's you know like i don't know what in his 40s or something he's he's like he's middle-aged right and he feels like he he's jealous of his partner his friend um because he has a family his friend just complains about his family all the time but he wants nothing more than just like to settle down with somebody and have a family of his own but he's never been able to make that happen so there's that and then on top of that he has a heisenberg moment where he finds out he has a giant brain tumor and has a limited amount of time to live theoretically so um and, and that doesn't really come up like beyond beyond it being sort of like used later on at one pivotal moment it actually, it seems like it doesn't factor into the story all that much. But anyway, all that not emotionally, like, not yeah, as exactly. Emotional it doesn't like you would think it would. There's no like correlate. There's no resonance between going back in time to undisclosed locations in history, or undisclosed points in time in history, and his specific uh, challenges, his specific story arc, and that's what really bothered me is that the arc that he has. I mean, it makes sense in a these are things that happened to this guy sort of way, like in a very linear, weirdly, a very linear sense. And based on the trailer, based on everything that I, I, I thought I understood about what this movie was going to be, I thought it was going to be way more out there, way more like challenging to follow, way more time jumpy. And it was time jumpy, but they clearly define where things begin and end. So that it's not like it's a watching, it's not like watching a David Lynch movie where you're like, whoa, what is this supposed to mean? It's just like, okay, this is that. And that's that. And things are just kind of presented as are, as they are, but they don't really resonate with our main character. And, I, and that, that was the thing that really weirded me out. It's like, okay, I mean, I get that this guy, the only reason this guy seems to have a brain tumor is because it allows him to, ha, allows him to travel back in time because it affects his pineal gland in a very specific way that makes him more like a young person. Um, in his pineal gland specifically, and that's what allows this time travel to happen. That's why that's why adults aren't having this effect, but people who are younger are. You know, people on the younger end of the spectrum, eighteen ish and below. Yeah. So, yeah, like, so that, the daughter that, only... there's no reason for it. I don't. I yeah, don't the da the daughter only gets lost because she's young, and he's only able to go back and get her because he's got this special condition where his pineal gland has not calcified in a normal way like in a normal adult so yeah. that's that's fine the problem that they play it in my opinion too straight you're right they give you these very distinct rules and that's okay except they break them and yeah. their own rules that they spend so much of just this middle section of this movie establishing and making sure you understand like they're not confusing to me but they, yeah. 
it completely ruins the the last third of the movie because everything that they set you up for like these are rules of how this works they throw out the fucking door like like it doesn't they don't follow should we get into that rules. now yeah i mean i because yeah, there, there are definitely some moments it sounds like you maybe have a more pointed condition on that than i do i but, think so but i mean yeah. do you yeah, it seems to... sort of like unclear how he actually finds Dennis's daughter because he goes yeah. back. He goes back to the house where she, they're having a party, and and she ends up taking the synchronic. And uh, the one of the girls was at, was at the party, and she's like, "Yeah, last time I saw her, she was sitting in that chair over there, and that's when she took the synchronic." So Steve gets in the chair, he pops the drug, and he goes back in time, and he can't find her. Uh, and then he talks to the, the friend again. She's like, well, I mean, she could have walked off. I don't really know where she ended up going. So like, we have no idea. She could be anywhere in the city having taken this drug and like gone back in time. And he just thinks uh, that there's this like boulder that has the word always carved into the side of it that's sort of like focused on uh, prominently throughout the movie. And he has a random hunch that, you know, maybe she went to that boulder and that, that, that is, is where she yeah. tripped. Uh, so he, he goes there. And um, is I guess just so happens to guess correctly that that is the rigatoni. Um, <laughs> so like, how the hell he knows that? I don't, you know. But he, that's he, what I would have carved into that rock. Rigatoni. Rig <laughs> Where's Randy? Oh shit! This rock says rigatoni over here. This That'd is a significant it. rock. If you ever see something, the word rigatoni carved into something <laughs> ancient, know that I was back in time. Randy's been here, but oh, when? Lord. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. So he he saves her. It all it, it's it feels like very very loose and random in the way that this movie ends. And I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of unsatisfactory. And like, why why did like she? So she did not actually carve always in the rock. Yeah, I, I guess. So I guess he did. But then why would he do that? Why did he carve always in this? I didn't assume that even he did. I don't. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay, that that's the problem. Here's here's the problem with the ending of this movie and the way that they set it up. This guy spends the whole middle section of the movie doing experiments to establish the rules to the point where he's in his house. And if you stand on this X, you go back to the Ice Age. He goes back to the Ice Age and he does it twice. Okay, if I stand this exact spot, you're where you are standing has a very specific correlation to what time you go back because then he moves over to his couch just a couple feet away and it's a completely different time okay so they established this so the ending is bullshit in a lot of ways because yeah he goes to the house and falls through the sky <laughs> it's in a she's gotta get back to a tree and she's not there and so the girl's like, yeah, maybe, like, I don't know, maybe she walked off. Okay, so literally any spot, you have to be within a one-by-one right. one square Where did it kick to in? find her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the empty package was on the chair. But the thing is, the problem is, is they, they think about it. So he goes to his dad, and he's like, okay, here's the conundrum. Yep. So if you were your daughter, what would you do? And he's like, I'd write a message. Okay, well, there's this rock that she sat on before. And she's there happens to be a message there. It says always, spelled wrong. Um, so he goes there and she just so happens to be here. Now, here's another problem I have with that. Now, oh, hang on, let me finish that thought. But then, yeah, she's like, I didn't carve the message. So it's like, okay, well, that so entire her happenstance. with the dad yeah, yeah. and this hunch it's all bullshit. See, Why? What? Why? Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I will defend to a certain point the decision to have her have left from that point. Now, I don't yeah. like the, the fact that the empty package was on the chair is annoying to me because it kind of counter contradicts this a little bit. That's because true. you don't open a package with, you don't open a pill and then not immediately take it usually. Yeah, um, let me open this pill, hold it in my palm. Yeah, and, and walk, the rock. you know, a few blocks at least. I don't know how yeah. far they are away. So anyway, <clears throat> like she goes down to this rock. This rock is not significant to her, except that she was sitting on it earlier. She seemed to enjoy the view. It was a way of separating herself from her family, which she felt distant from in some way, but we don't really explore that very much. And then, like, so I don't know, the the, the spot being significant to her and her dad understanding that, even if he doesn't really understand why, like even if it's ascribed to something wrong, 
I mean, that makes a kind of sense. But the fact that he, the, the, the ascribing it to being like, ah, he would carve something. Where have we seen something carved? At the rock. Like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, like that they would just guess right. Like, you're talking yeah. about finding somebody not just on the planet Earth, not just in a city, not just in a county, not just in an area. You're talking about through the entire history of time, and you cannot control what time you're in except by guessing. Yeah. Where where to go in order to take that trip? And it's very specific. Like, if they had said, like, where specific. would you go if you were in the? Where do you think you know your daughter? You know what she was going through. You spoke to her that afternoon, and she seemed morose. Can you tell me where you think she would go if she was feeling despondent or sure, if she was, fe- yeah. you know, like? And that would make sense. But instead, they like make the thing that's just just so he can Anthony Mackie can go back in time. And be like, oh, we saw the message you left. And she goes, what the fuck are you talking about? Just so they can have this moment of like, wow, what a coinky dink. Like, that's not how you want to end your fucking movie. <laughs> well, and here's another problem I had with it. Okay, here's another problem. Every time the old Falcon goes back in time, he gets himself into some trouble. And that's fine. And it was, mm-hmm. you know, like... He falls down through a tree and he comes to these like woodsmen or um, woodsmen, like, like tribesmen witch doctors yeah, or, something. Yeah. or something who like chase him up the tree or whatever. They think he's a spirit. Um, he, he gets caught in like a KKK member's house, you know, in like the 20s or something. He gets caught in the ice age where he has to like build a fire and meets a yeah. um, like a hunter or whatever. Okay, that's like fine. Conquistador guy. But here's the problem Man, I have. Conquistador in the swamp, yeah. The daughter has been missing for days. Like right. it, not an hour, not to like days. She's been missing for days. And when he finds her, she's in a war zone. <laughs> a war zone and he happens to stumble upon her in a trench where assumedly she's just been crouching and hiding for days well that's another question too surviving that's another question on top of your question which is with if like like take for example let's just for ease let's go to the example of the ice age because he goes to that location twice the first time he goes, he sees the Neanderthal in the distance coming towards him and then disappears before he gets too close. The second time, the Neanderthal is a little bit closer. So are you going back? Is the point in time that you're traveling to moving concurrent to like the time that we're in now? Like that's that's a question that they don't really go into. And, you know, to, to their to their credit, a lack of exposition about how this works is not the problem with this movie with, for me overall. True, yeah. But if we're going to get into it and if you're going to hinge on it, that seems like something that you got to explain because yeah, was she there for days or was she there? Did she just run away from that rock a second before he appeared back in time? Was it like back to the future where he like can, yeah, you know, comes back to that moment in time or does he go back to that moment in time with the adjustment of how many days it's been since she went back from that moment and from that spot? Like there's a lot of little idiosyncratic things that you want to like get your I, fucking fingers into a little bit. If you're really going to really make the lore of how this works, the central focus. <laughs> I guess, I guess here's how I see it and how the movie explains it best, I guess, or I don't know. It's like, okay. So if the daughter stood on that rock and she went back in time, okay. But the problem is, is you have to be standing in that same exact spot seven minutes later. So time progresses through the camcorder and time progresses also back in time at the same speed because he checks it with his watch. Okay, so seven minutes go by. That's how he times. If you're not, if you're not in the same spot, seven minutes go by in both times, then you get left behind. So this girl gets left behind days ago. Okay, where time seems to move at the same time. She runs away and goes and hides in a trench Mm -hmm. and is there for days. And then he comes back. And let's just say he even comes back to the same time where she originally came back. Well, the problem is, is like the whole explanation is that time has moved forward for her. So even if he came back at the same time where she arrived, because she wasn't in the spot, time has moved forward. And so by their own explanation, she should have been there several days. I guess. And then the other thing is like, at that point, they dr- they don't even explain this. They just make it so 
they give he Anthony gives her a piece of like gives her a drug like one of the drug like one of the pills and like that's brownie. some yeah I know I didn't know how to phrase that for whatever reason but <laughs> but he finds her in this ditch in this trench and he's like okay here take this but why like won't that that like how does that does that is yeah. it a one way trip now it goes forward now like what are we fucking doing what are we doing so I guess at that point like you you would go anywhere like you wouldn't necessarily just go back to your normal time right if you took the drug when you were already back in time like wouldn't it just take you fucking anywhere again yeah, like, wouldn't it, would, yeah exactly wouldn't it take you further back to some well, other undisclosed unknowable part of time right no he, this <laughs> this is the one experiment he did when he got caught in the kkk guy's house the way yeah. that he got back is he took the pill again and went back to his same spot where he had arrived Okay. So it was like a doorway. So they did explain it. Did it doesn't he? make it doesn't make a lick of sense. Yeah, they did. He okay, kept, I didn't see him kept, take another pill. I guess he I did. He missed. took it because he was talking to his dog, and he's like, "Okay, I have blank minutes or whatever." And he took it while he was in the woods waiting for the guy to leave his house. And then he like ran in the house, and he was like sitting in the couch, like, "Okay, I'm waiting for my seven minutes to go up." And that's when the whole dog like broke see? loose and he lost his dog. Now here's the problem with that though, too. Here's the problem with that. He sets up a whole experiment that is successful, where he is holding on to a living being, his dog, yeah. and successfully takes it back in time. And the only reason the experiment fucked up the second time is because he was not holding the dog. He was holding the leash, but he wasn't holding the dog. So theoretically, again, by the explanation of this fucking movie, these writers... If she had taken the pill and he had just like he got rid of the slave or whatever, if she had just held on to him, they would have traveled back together. You're right. I would argue, I would say one possible explanation for that, which I don't ascribe to as as being a good explanation, but is the idea that he already has it in his system. He he could take her theoretically, but if they get separated and he knows this works then that's a way that he can ensure that she goes even if he doesn't. So if like if he like you know I I know that they're in a war zone whatever. Like all that I don't know. The thing is like this is magical stuff we're talking about here we're, but it's play acting as science. And when you do that there's a certain level of like realism you're <clears throat> you need to adhere to and it it varies different different based on each movie or whatever. But in this case it feels like they didn't really account for everything this thing this thing takes you to a random point in time so they introduce randomness as a concept in how this works but it's not really random like it like the he figures out how it works in like just a few goes and i don't know like it just it feels too convenient to me that ah, i figured out that i can take this pill and go back to the future this way or like i don't know it just it really feels like if you're gonna if you're gonna have this randomness element in there, like this chaos theory bullshit, you can't then just have it be sort of like on a tether. You know what I mean? It feels like people trying to play volleyball with a tether ball. It, like you're, it doesn't really, it just doesn't track to me. And the thing is, like, I can forgive a lot of that stuff. I really can. A lot of like the inconsistencies, the logical inconsistencies, or whatever, I can forgive that if there is a metaphor or if there is some sort of story element intertwined with it that makes it function makes the way it functions important but i don't see that in this movie <laughs> i don't see any reason for to forgive these issues because i don't see any reason for these issues to exist in absence of an actual like story arc for this character that relates to the story that's happening in front of us it's just like i don't know like again it seems random that he's like He's just the guy that's doing this and like because his life is in shambles for X, Y, and Z, but none of that really factors in except for his frame of mind, period. And even that, it's kind of like if you like the only reason for him to do this is because of the pineal gland. If that's the case, just have him go in for a checkup and have the doctor be like, well, you're not in the best shape anymore, but weirdly your pineal gland is like, great. It's like a teenager's and I, I guess like, I don't know. It just seems like there's nothing adhering the character to the plot. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I do want to talk about 
some other aspects of this movie though and not just Please. like the inner workings of, of the time travel and all that uh i want i don't know like you guys know me i fucking love the city of new orleans and this is very much yeah. set in new orleans i think they they use that to their advantage quite a bit and there's a lot of really neat set pieces here like justin you already mentioned the like abandoned theme park that they go to which is really in new orleans and it's creepy as fuck when you drive by it I like that they incorporate that. Um, there's also uh, a little bit of like uh, Hurricane Katrina involved here yeah. uh, in the plot where the, one of the characters uh, loses their, what is their mother and their- His mother, his sister. father, and, and his, his sister. And his, yeah. Yeah. his little sister when she's a child. And um, they- The uh, coffins rise, right? Yeah, the coffins rise and he's got to like identify the bodies, which is pretty gruesome. Um, and I think that's sort of haunting him and, and Steve is like dealing with that. And that's probably why he's abusing drugs uh, and alcohol throughout this movie. He's just sort of like wrestling with that. Uh, there's also like this voodoo doctor character uh, and he like breaks his leg. Um, he's got a compound yeah. and the paramedics roll up to like to set his leg and get him in the ambulance. And he's just like, full on taunting them and you can't understand what he's saying but he's got like uh paint on his face and he's wearing all this like crazy outfit and he's just like laughing hysterically at like steve and dennis and they're having like this real like uh like difficult moment in the movie they end up coming to blows they actually like get in a fight yeah. and this dude is just like laughing in their faces it's like really effective and creepy and like uncomfortable like this whole this sequence um so I don't know. I think I, I say all that to, to say that I think they use the city in the setting uh, very effectively. Um, I think that's fair to say. I, I did like a lot of the New Orleans aspects in it, and I liked. I, I'm kind of split on because of the like, the way the the time travel works. Part of me is like annoyed that they keep going back to times. It's very specific. Like when he goes back in time, it's never to. It's just like one time. It's to the Ice Age in that one spot. But how many millions of years was that fucking ice age? And you just happen to the rest of the time go back to moments in relatively recent history. You know what I mean? You're going back to the 1800s. You're not going back to BC, like 2000 yeah. BC. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know it's what the conquistadors. That was probably around like what 1650. It's over a span of like 400 years. Of, yeah, of, sure, of sure. Human history. You well, know what I mean? Dude, yeah. I will. The one dude did go back to the desert, so yeah. they did at least give you that. Yeah, I guess so. The thing is, like, it's not. It's, desert, it's not just like, I, to me, it's like there's always a, there's always a person around somehow. There's always something. Or the fucking woolly mammoth, which is kind of cool to see. I thought that was cool. Like, I was stoked about that. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, like, visually and like like story wise, I get it. Like, you you don't want to go back to an ice age thirty times. <laughs> you want to go to a bunch of different times and explore like the different like him interacting with you know Jim Crow South, him interacting with fucking the spanish settlers him interacting with the fucking neanderthals like that those are more engaging so on that level i get it but it's just like the, like with that time travel element like if it's going to be random then random means random man you don't get to like caveat that if you're going to be and the thing is like i don't know it all again i'm just going to start repeating myself because it all kind of hinges on whether or not there's a reason for his story to go the way that it's going for for him to be adhered to this story about this what method of time travel um but yeah i don't know and as far as the new orleans stuff i loved seeing the different like parts of new orleans i loved it as a viewer and like just to see like oh okay so this spot i was this this thing and this thing and this thing all at the same time but it's like but we don't see it that way because we're time is linear to us that's cool and all but it doesn't like i don't know it doesn't work for me in tandem with everything else <laughs> I like the, uh, we don't get much of this character, but there's the Dr. Kermani character who invents this drug. Yeah, I want uh, to see more of him. Yeah, he he's only in a couple scenes. Uh, and when we first see him, he's trying to buy all the drugs off Steve uh, because like there's a very limited batch left and he's, I, I guess, unable to make any more. Um, he said it was supposed to be sort of like a, a, a DMT type of drug um, that you could just go buy in the store for a little while anyways. Uh, and he, he's the one that really explains initially how like this drug lets people um, experience like time the way that it really is. And he holds up a record and he's like, you see this record, you only listen to one song at a time, but they're all there next to each other 
always, you know, and I thought that was kind of like a neat way to explain like how time it really is. Like it's not linear. It's a flat circle it's a, is what it's, you're saying. It's a flat circle. That's exactly right. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh, bless bless you. Randy. Sweet oh, child. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There was, I had a couple other problems that doesn't have to do with the time um, in this that I would like to bring up because I, Randy, you weren't on the episode where we covered the endless. Tammy was a guest on that. I think you were traveling yeah. maybe, but I, I've seen it. I have a problem with these guys and it, it, this has come up in this. They look dumb. Well, uh, maybe, but um, <laughs> it also happens to come up in this movie too. I, I feel like they're tight in some areas and sloppy in some areas. And there are moments in this where we're talking about where it lacked the impact that it could have had where I, it just seemed like sloppy filmmaking to me, just like from a craft standpoint. And so I'd like to touch on some of those. Um, one of them was they try to make it significant and like hint to the idea of the theme. But in my mind, when I was, and I was really trying to focus on it, me and Bob watched it together and we were kind of like tossing ideas around but they even in the current time, so not when people are traveling back in time, but when we are exploring the relationship of these two like best friends, you find out maybe halfway through the movie that the scenes that we are seeing are not necessarily themselves in chronological order. And, and they tease with a little idea of like, oh, what time are we actually in? What has happened so far that we've seen? What happened first? What happened second? What happened third? But that, even that didn't seem to have any significance. And at one point, I thought they were trying to track it based on the colors because we, we had just gotten like a hint of it that things weren't necessarily chronological. And in the very next scene, there was this very distinct color pattern of like this yellow color while the dude was sitting in his house. And I was like, Bob, oh, maybe they're trying to track it by like color. Like if you're in this color, you're in this time. If you're in this color, you're in this time. And then I watched it the rest of the movie. That was like at the beginning of the second, third. And they didn't. As far as I could tell, they didn't. It just seemed like another thing they wanted to add in there to make it seem mysterious and make it seem significant. But as far as I could tell, and I was like really trying to hone in and pay attention, it didn't have any significance whatsoever. Are you talking about the color grading? What do you mean yellow? No, it's, no, I'm mainly talking about what my main, my main critique Yeah, is that they, they give you this thing to where, oh, guess what? Everything that we're seeing between these two best friends, our two main characters, is not necessarily chronologically in order. They jump around. And so they tease you with the idea like you don't actually know what has happened up to this scene that you're watching because they jump around and they make it seem like it's significant. Like, why are we jumping around? Why are we seeing these things out of order? And I thought they were trying to track it based on the color because once they do that kind of reveal, like oh, this isn't chronologically in order, the very next scene, there's a very distinct yellow color grading on the guy while he's sitting in his house. And I, I leaned over to Bob and I was like, hey, maybe they're trying to track time based on color, like a hint to the viewer. Like, oh, if it's no, this I yellow that. color. Yeah, so, but they, as far as I understand in the filmmaking of this film and the craft of this film, that didn't have actually any significance on the story or the characters to make that choice, to make that yeah. stylistic choice of the time jumping. Yeah, I didn't notice that, but in, in you talking about that, it did make me think about this, which is the, the fact that it does jump around. It, it doesn't jump around so much as to be incomprehensible by any means like this is a very easy to understand movie i feel like like you don't jump ahead to him to to anthony mackie like in the past or like you know you you, you don't like if you do it's like little flashes if anything uh, you're just kind of like jumping around from time to time but in that way i think there is some correlation to the story which is this is it i think that ties into the the time travel aspect because it's the whole thing is synchronic is the name of the movie the idea that time is happening concurrently you know what i mean so yeah. it's just the, fact, the idea that time wouldn't be linear in a movie about time not being linear yeah. makes sense to me <laughs> it's consistent with the theme of the movie yeah it's yeah. not i in think the, itself i don't have a problem with that but in terms of like 
other little nitty gritties, I have problems with that too. Yeah. As far as the coloring goes, it, I don't know. You might've just been reading too much into that. Scene I, no, I was. And my problem isn't with the coloring and they didn't track it that way. My problem is that that choice, like while it might have been like, okay, thematically, like, okay, that's how they explain time to you. It didn't have any significance on the story or like the characters. It didn't, it didn't service in a way that mattered. I yeah. guess it literally was just a stylistic choice that made you think it was going to have some significance. And as far as I, I can tell, it, it did it. Like, it did. like not the color not, part aspect. No, no, not the color, but, the time. I'm, let's on. So forget about the color. But the chronologic For, thing. I completely forget yeah, about the, the color. fact yeah, that it's, it's not high. chronological. I think is thematically appropriate. Yeah, but I don't it think not, that it's untethered. I think what today, Justin yeah. is really getting at is it does not affect the plot. There is no like no plot that's development, true. but it is thematically consistent. Yeah, it's thematically consistent, but it didn't serve us in a way to say like, here's a reveal about the character that you didn't know because it was yeah. out of time, or here's like something. It didn't like matter other than yeah, okay, that's how time works in their theme so like it can work in this movie too like oh that okay i don't know like, i don't have a problem with that personally like to me that's like it's kind of if, uh, if the if the i mean if anything i would say if you're gonna have it be time is not linear time chronology is is a flat circle and everything happens concurrently if you're gonna have that then stick to that show us some things that are gonna happen later on like and have the context of it be filled in as we go and it doesn't really do that and like yeah. that's yeah i guess that's, that's what is I'm that what you're like, getting at okay yeah, yeah. it didn't that, like that matter I... to our characters or to the story it literally was just a choice that they made yeah. like a contextless shot of anthony mackie in a trench like huddled up for or, or or the girl brianna in a trench at some point like and then like they do this a few times which i really like i really enjoyed these smash cuts some of the smash cuts they had of, of um anthony mackie like where he's like I, I just for example i don't remember if this is specifically what happens but he's in like the doctor's office holding his head being like holy shit i can't believe i have cancer and then it bounces with that exact same blocking everything where his face is in the exact same position and holding his head but in the back of the ambulance uh a week earlier or whatever and he's complaining about a headache or what you know what i mean like that's the sort of thing like where it's where it makes sense to me it's like okay these same people are existing in different points in time the things they're experiencing are concurrent he's having the same pain the context of the pain is different like that that's the sort of thing i get so show brianna is brianna right whatever the girl's name yeah like that's her name. Bri Brianna, show her in the trench or whatever, or sitting on the rock in a in a battlefield at the beginning of the movie, and have us be like, "Who is this? What the fuck is the this battle? What you know?" Like, and then fill in the context later. Like that's a very bad example, but that sort of thing. I wish they had done a little more of that to maybe justify what you're describing as sort of like having no reason to do that. I think the reason is there, the the like thematically, but it's not connecting like like mentally it's not connecting at least it didn't connect to me as being related to the the timeline you know the chronology issue it, i don't know it didn't it just didn't really like resonate with me as being relevant to what they're going through or didn't really like it didn't tell me the story of everything's happening at once it just told me the story of like oh okay now we're going here like <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, yeah, it, I think we're kind of like describing the same thing in different ways. Yeah, but I agree. Overall, I don't know. The thing is, it, this it just kind of falls. It falters in its adherence to principles that it itself then doesn't adhere to later. Do you guys have anything else you want to mention before we rate this movie? I guess the acting is good. I would say. I didn't realize that this is fucking Christian Gray, this white guy. Yeah, I no yeah. I, look, I found that out by looking up his name. Oh damn! One of I the, didn't either. Yeah. I've one of the first things movies, it says but... is that he was dubbed the quote "golden torso" by the New York Times. That's a weird what a title. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I hear the word torso, I always just think of Thirteenth Ghost and that torso that just carries itself around in the hallway. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, it does guess. explain why he kept wanting to like slap old Falcon's ass. Like he was really getting in there, just like really into checking it. the oil. Yeah, just whipping him, whipping that ass, <laughs> checking the oil. Damn. <laughs> this here Falcon, it's well oiled. Let me tell you what. <laughs> 
Also, yeah, uh, Anthony Mackie, though, I think he's great. And honestly, I kept like I had this thought in the movie where I was like, I feel like Anthony Mackie, when he's like an older man, like when he's like in his 60s, he's going to be like a fabulous uh, character actor for moments where you need like a guy who's seen some shit. Like, you know what I mean? He's got the folksy way of talking while at the same time, like sort of like a been there, done that sort of vibe, especially in this movie. I don't know. I, I think he's going to be really like, like, I don't know how long the MCU is going to go on or whatever, but like if it goes on forever, so let's say, and he's like an old man, Captain America at some point, like, I think he's going to be fucking great at that as being like the guy who's seen some shit, the guy who has the folksy wisdom who can lay it down for you. But you know, I don't know. I, I, that's a really weird thing, but I was like, the way he talks is the cadence of an older guy. And I feel like, mm-hmm. like an older guy you could learn some shit from. Keep it in your pants, Randy. Jeez. I like the guy's acting. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he does a good job. Uh, I definitely agree with you. Uh, but let's go ahead and rate this thing. Out of five, Juice, why don't you kick us off? How do you feel about Synchronic? Okay. I These guys, they have good ideas. I don't think they're capable of pulling them off. Like it's never been seamless to me. Um, anytime I watch their movies, I think like, oh, there's some intriguing ideas here. There's usually some interesting visualizations, but I feel like they always fall flat for me. They don't, I don't know. They they are not able to realize their ideas. It's almost like they have these scenes playing out in their mind and they work backwards from that. And they're not able to make them significant or mean what they're supposed to mean. They're good with ideas. They're not very good with characters, in my opinion, or actually fleshing their ideas out to make like something significant. It's, it really just still feels like an idea. Like what if somebody took a drug and they went back in time? Like, okay, let's make a movie about that. And that's all it feels like to me. It doesn't feel realized in these characters. The acting, and that's a shame too, because the acting is good. So the things I'll praise about this movie, the acting is good. And I thought there was a lot of potential with these characters and with the struggles they set them up for were intriguing. And that's the problem is there was plenty of meat on this bone to work with. This guy, I mean, the whole idea of setting this guy up, he's in his 40s. You know, he's got a best friend who complains about his family all the time. He wants a family and now he's sick. There's so much to work with there. So much to work. And and they killed it on both ends. Like everybody played their role correctly and it still didn't resonate with me. What they gave me just didn't matter to me. And that is so unfortunate because too, again, with so like that, had a lot of potential with the characters that they set up and the actors that they chose to play them and that fell flat this idea was very intriguing to me going in the first 15 minutes i was like oh my god like this pirate sword this person caught on fire this person falling through the sky into the desert like those were all great visuals that set up this huge expectation for me i was like this is gonna be sick like i am Like, this is going to be a cool fucking movie. And it just wasn't. (laughs) Like, it was okay at best. Um, It feels like they pissed away a lot. And that's unfortunate. And I feel like they've done that several times for me now. I just, these guys just don't, aren't able to pull it off, in my opinion. Um, So I'm going to give this movie a 2.5 out of 5. 2.5 from Juice. Uh, I'm going to jump in here real quick and spill my beans. Um, I'm not quite as hard on it as you, Justin. I generally agree with all your gripes. Uh, They set up a lot, and the ending definitely lacks the punch, the the emotional punch that it's supposed to have. Like, this man's daughter's missing, and he's terrified. Um, His best friend, like, helps get her back. And like they definitely have a troubled relationship and you know steve's past is like pretty fucked up and he's haunted by it but like i was never fully pulled into like their friendship so when they uh, had struggles i would didn't really feel invested and like it didn't like pull at my heartstrings at all i was like i don't know they didn't seem that close i guess they're fine or whatever um and you know you don't ever really get to know uh this dude's daughter so like when she goes missing you're like okay well it's a character that i never knew that's gone so i'm 
there's like nothing really going on there. And then in the end, you know, the big climax with the war and all that, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense logically how they found her at all or the significance of always being carved in the rock. Like, what does it mean? Why is it misspelled? Who carved it? Like, and also like if she was the person that was going to carve a message in the rock, like, wouldn't she be like, yo, this is Brianna. I am stuck in the year or whatever the <laughs> fuck. Not just like some cryptic ass always like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't logically make sense in the end. So it's it's it sets up a lot of cool ideas, um, and it does not fully flesh them out. However, I think the ride is fun and enjoyable, um, and it's cool to see uh, the Falcon in this movie. I don't know that I've seen him in anything else, but he's a solid actor, and he's sort of like doing these crazy time warp experiments with this designer drug, and it's just kind of a cool, fun ride, um, and I like it for that. Visually, I think the movie's pretty dope. Um, they do a lot of really interesting camera movements. Um, they have this one where Anthony Mackie walks out of a house after seeing a couple dead bodies. And he looks up at the sky and the camera like is zoomed in on his face and then like launches up in the air and does like a backflip over the city of New Orleans and just like shoots across the, the cityscape upside down. It just looks really neat. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of camera movement in this movie that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, so technically it's got some cool stuff going on overall. I'm going to give it a three out of five. Good. Not great. Um, Randy, how do you feel? Yeah, I'm pretty re much resonating with what you guys are saying. I, I again, like the, the real issue for me, it seems to be pretty similar to what Justin has brought up, which is the idea that this, and then this, this is, this is true of the endless as well. I noticed, I, I haven't listened to your episodes. So I don't know your, I know you guys didn't like it that much based on your offhanded comments later. But uh, I watched it knowing that, and I thought, this isn't so bad. Um, and the reason was because I thought the concept was cool. It's the same It's the same thing where it's, it's resonating on the level of the sci-fi conceptual idea is sound and interesting. And like Justin said, it seems like they worked backwards from that to try and make characters to just fit in this world. But they didn't make characters that like fit into that concept seamlessly they didn't make characters that fit into that concept thematically they're just characters who happen to be in that situation as a matter of happenstance or you know it just doesn't they don't they don't they don't tie together with what's happening to them it's almost like like a, a really like bare bones like comic book superpower that they happen upon but there's no like great power great responsibility moment there's just okay, so I need to do this. And like, it's just one thing leads to another dots are connecting, but they're not connecting uh, with a character arc. You know what I mean? The character arc is almost entirely separate. The only sort of resonation I could see is that maybe there's, this is like some sort of rumination on like a midlife crisis for Anthony Mackie or an end life crisis for Anthony Mackie. It could be both or one or the other. And if they had leaned into that, maybe a little more significantly, maybe it would have had some resonance, but, it just doesn't really seem like they're related. It seems like you, this could have been any character in this position and it would have had the same net effect. And when you do that, it makes the errors in your sci-fi logic really stand out. So I think that's kind of like the, the crux of my major issues with that. That said, Rob is dead on. I think the cinematography in this movie, we haven't brought it up, but that is the standout for me in this movie. The way this movie is shot the way things dissolve and reappear, the way that, yeah, that that, that swooping shot of the city, like the way that it sh smash cuts from Anthony Mackie in one setting to another. Like, I like all of that. And I think that whoever the cinematographer was on this is fucking great. And I, I would love to see more of that shit. So good on that. I thought the acting overall was really good. I did buy the friendship of the two leads, but I will say that I don't, like I, I don't think that we got the full context of what the relationship is. Um, it's almost like Anthony Mackie is kind of like an extra part of the family, but he doesn't have his own family, but they don't really ruminate on that. We don't know. Like we never see Anthony Mackie talk about or think about his family that he found washed up and make, they make a point of bringing up as being unearthed by hurricane Katrina. Presumably. I don't even think they say that outright, but I think they do. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, nevertheless, like they, there's no actual moment of resonance for that either. We're just kind of told that he has a past and like, that's it. I, I don't, I don't know. I have a big 
problem with that with connecting with these characters because of that and connecting these characters to each other because of that so i don't know and also i wanted this movie to be trippier than it was based on the on the um trailer i think we got enough of those visuals for it to work but it wasn't psychologically trippy it was just visually trippy and that's to me it's just not fully enough for for a really really good movie um what else yeah i I think that's really the the crux of it is like this just it seems like a a sci-fi concept with any given characters thrown in and some semblance of a character arc that doesn't really connect to the concepts at play the sci-fi concepts they just don't meet so that's my biggest complaint and it really does for me hamper my enjoyment of it it makes me question what what the point of the movie is like both in making it and in watching it so in that sense i was kind of disappointed especially because there's all this good stock here you know what i mean so in that sense i mean with all that in mind i think i'm just going to give it a three as rob did it's not bare minimum you know what i mean it's better than absolute middle of the road for me because that cinematography is so mouthwatering to me it's so good some of the concepts of like pulling things through time and having them warp with time like the doubloon that's all warped i loved that the fucked up uh, sword like i loved all that but it just doesn't tie in and it's just really more spectacle seeming that doesn't really even support itself at that point so yeah three three for me Three from Randy. He's going to put the aggregate at a 2.8. Let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten Tomato segment, see what the critics and users think about Synchronic. All right. So if you're new to the podcast, I don't know why you're here, but thank you. And uh, we're going to do a segment called Rotten Tomatoes in which these two gentlemen are going to guess within 0 to 100% how many of the critics gave this a positive review and then we're going to do the same with the users. All right, um let me pull up my notes here. All right, Juice, we're going to start with you. We're going to start with the critics as well. Um there are 131 critic scores for this film. <clears throat> what percentage do you think were positive reviews? Hmm. I don't know why, but I think people are going to like this movie more than I did. Um, So I'm going to go fairly high on it. And I'm going to say 78. 78. All right. 78% for Soju. Bobby, what are you thinking? I'm going to go a little bit higher with an 82, please. A little bit high. No. All right. 82% from Bob. Justin. Justin, are you man enough to give that hell yeet to Rob? And I'll give success? a hell skeet, Bob. Thank oh, you. shit. Bob Deviant likes to skeet a little bit more, I think. From the windows. The walls. <laughs> Go on. No, I'm yeah, just I, I, I was <laughs> uh, Rob is actually going to get a little ringy ding a ding a ding a ding. Eighty-two oh, percent positive. Eighty-two percent. Yes. Good mm-hmm. going for Bob. Uh, let's I'll read this. Like that mm, yeah. <laughs> I'll ox a ding a ling. All right. <laughs> Fun and games. Uh, <laughs> let's read this critics' consensus here. Synchronic sets off and on an intriguingly and idiosyncratic sci-fi journey that should satisfy fans of Aaron Moorhead and Justin Vincent's earlier work. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, if you liked Uwe Boll, you'll like Uwe Boll's new movie in which he does the same shit. Same weird shit. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, well, okay. It doesn't really speak to the movie so much, but whatever. Um, All right, let's go to the audience score, though, before we get into uh, the negative reviews here. Uh, Let's start with Bob. Bob, what do you think the audience gave this? And there are only, again, weird, weirdly, 131 of those also. Wow, okay. I feel like it's going to be a little bit lower than the critics. I feel like people are not going to love this movie. I don't think anybody, I don't know. I'm just going to go with a 75, please. 75 percentile from Bob. Soju, what are you feeling? Uh, I'm going to go slightly lower with a 72. 72 percentile. All right, Bobby. Yeah. I can't I 
I, you are so close to having two ringy dingies in an evening. So close. 76%. Damn. All right. Damn. You have a margin of error. Hell ye sweet. Hell ye sweet. Hell ski, Bob. Oh, ski, ski. No, you got a, you got a 0.5% margin of error today. God damn. Yeah. I'll take it. Bob, I don't well want to done. call you a cheater, cheater, blunkin eater, but that's very <laughs> suspicious numbers you got there. How does one eat a blunkin? Bob. Blunkins. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's <laughs> let's pick a random negative you, review. What? I was gonna say, can you please update the pumpkins uh, graphic and make it say blumpkins so I can get that on a coffee mug? Oh yeah, I'll put it on top of my list. Yeah, that's how you eat a blunkin right there. Thank so, you. So in two years you'll get a blunkin. That's how you achieve a blunkin. <laughs> Um, all right. As we do, I'm going to read a random negative review just for the fuck of it. Usually they're funnier. Synchronic is frankly just silly and tedious with faintly absurd and jeopardy free time travel scenes and a dramatic focus hopelessly split between Dennis and Steve's separate but equally tiresome lives. Damn. <laughs> That's brutal. That's yeah, pretty, pretty harsh. Pretty brutal, but I, I can't say that I disagree too, too much. Yeah. Uh, was that by uh, soju69 at hotmail.com? Nah, that was by, well, I don't know if we're going to. Hot Randy69. Some asshole. Hot Randy. Not smart guys like us. Not really smart critics. Like <laughs> totally. <laughs> we got it perfect. Yeah. We know. All right, and there's your Rotten Maters. This shit ain't rotten in, in, to anybody but us, apparently. <laughs> yeah, what it wait? Yeah. It wouldn't be fresh in our eyes. No. Oh, we well. are not men of any people or critics. We are outlanders. No. Or our own men. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Deviants, uh, if you will. <laughs> uh, Randy, thank you for the Rotten Maters there. Juice, is there? You said there's a little bit of trivia, right? There's a scotch. It's it's worth the time. All right, let's jump into it. It's totally time for trivia. Crypt Kicker is just not sticking to his cues. I don't get it. Damn. All right. All right, boys. So we're going to do a little trivia. So Bob had mentioned this before, but this takes place in New Orleans, Louisiana, where one of the lead actors, Anthony Mackie, was actually born. So he's oh, from no New shit. Orleans. So that's that. nice for him. Yeah. Um, The name of Steve's dog is Hawking. It's yeah, a reference that. to the late English physicist Stephen Hawking. Given the fact that there is some information about quantum physics and time travel in the movie, whoa, tight, 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 tight. subtle <laughs> nod there. Um, it would appear when Steve goes back seeking Brianna, he ends up in a war zone. It's difficult to say for certain what the conflict was. Yet with the stars and bars Confederate flag on display, it could well have been the Battle of Fort Jackson and St. Philip, April 18th to the 28th in 1862. This proved to be a decisive battle for possession of New Orleans in the American Civil War. Steve and Brianna most likely get caught up in what turned out to be an ineff um, ineffectual bombardment of rafts by mortars from Union forces. Of course, it could all be made up and not connected. Ends this trivia. <laughs> it's, uh, all right. Okay. Fucking IMDb, well, man. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, of course, of I course. could just be reading way too much into it, says the trivia section. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, towards the end, when Steve goes back to find Brianna, he is confronted by a French slaver who seeks to claim him as his own. The slaver levels a musket at Steve. The musket is a flintlock, yet it is clearly not clearly not primed. Clearly, clearly. as the frizzed plate is forward. Clearly, this is this is the this is like when you tell us all about how air ducts work when we're watching. Yeah, high high. clearly, <laughs> amateurs. This would render the weapon incapable of firing in the circumstances. Perhaps the fog and smoke of war prevents Steve from spotting this. Who, Probably. Who knows? Probably. <laughs> Exclamation. <laughs> Does it say who knows? 
Does it really yeah. say that? Oh, oh shit, crazy. I thought you added that. Uh, <laughs> who wrote this shit? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, it's just a movie, says IMDb's trivia section. <laughs> Fucking hell. I love that, that shit. pretty good. Man. I love crowdsourcing shit like that. It's so funny. If it weren't uh, for the fog of war, he clearly <laughs> would have spotted Ah, that. yes, it's the fog of war that did it. <laughs> rock, musket, and the jib is forward, and the old jib, oh. that renders it useless, <laughs> sir. Smack- oh, Whoa. man, his smack jam's totally up the, <laughs> up the wrong side. Smack right? jam's logging on the flam dip. <laughs> region of the man we i can't even make up words quick enough to make this bit (laughs) work jesus there's Uh, um there's i guess this would probably be a decent uh time to mention the alternate ending yeah tell me about this alternate ending. so apparently uh these guys when they when they put a a movie out on blu-ray they often film and include a joke alternate ending as a bonus feature on the disc Uh, um (laughs) so I, i guess they did this for like the endless and spring and resolution um, and they, uh, on the disc for Synchronic, they, they have like a little, uh, uh, blurb before the ending happens to let you know, like, Hey, this is a joke alternate ending. We did this in all of our previous discs, but apparently they never put that warning out on the other disc. So people are watching these joke alternate endings, not really realizing that they're, that they're jokes. And they're like, Oh my God, I'm so happy. They did not go with this ending. And they went with the other one instead. Uh, so they give you uh, that little background knowledge and then show you what the alternate ending is. And it shows uh, a little paw carving always on the rock, like alluding to the <laughs> like dog. Like it was the dog yeah. <laughs> with a chisel okay. in his paw. <laughs> sure, sure. I also like that. That's that's kind of funny. I, 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 it's kind of a cock tease, though. I re- did think yeah. that there might be an alternate ending that might work better. But uh, is what it is. Also, the Hawking thing, I wanted to bring that back real quick. That is 100% cribbed off of Back to the Future. <laughs> the naming of your dog after a yeah. famous scientist. Like, that's that's very much Doc Brown's shtick. But anyway. All right. <laughs> Let's, um, well, I think that's going to do it for trivia. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about Cooter of the Week. Time to go hunting. Juice, what is a cooter? Cooter is character type, straight chillin' excluse. A cooter must hit three of these five points to be considered a cooter, and we want the cooter with the most points. The five points are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall look and attire and overall patheticness boys who are we taking to cooter court this week i don't Um, know if there's an outright cooter in this movie nobody's like really ring a ding and for myself there's one guy yeah what there's one guy who I, i don't know if he'll hit all the points but he hits at least one of them and that is a character that has no name as far as i know as far as i remember which is the old white cop who shows up at a few of these crime scenes that these paramedics are going to. Do you guys remember him? The guy who holds a gun on Anthony Mackie. And- yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. That's what you get for dressing like oh, Tupac or whatever he says. Yeah. yeah, he calls him Tupac. And God. it's like, yeah. So right there, that's that. And that specific line is the smug arrogance that I was looking at. I was like, for okay, sure. Yeah. This guy is sm- way up his own asshole and very comfortable being <laughs> extremely racist to people he depends on to, you know, save lives and shit. Yeah. You know, nothing, nothing important. Um, anyway, so there's that. As far as looking attire, he's just wearing standard cop gear. He's, I mean, he, patheticness, I think it's pretty pathetic to have that attitude personally, but I don't know if that's quite strong enough. Uh, yeah, I can't uh, remember him well enough. He was, the thing is, there's not enough of him, I don't think, to really. Yeah. Like, there's a lack of evidence here. And it's. I feel like if we had seen more of him, it would have been clear, but we didn't need to see more of him within the story. So, manipulation, I don't know if there's any of that. I don't know mm-hmm. if there's any. There's no sexual deviance that we can see from him. Um, yeah. I mean, Anthony Mackey, he's like 
maybe sexually deviant. He's just getting all these booty calls. No. But yeah, I guess not super deviant. Yeah, he's I don't just, think that's deviant at all. <laughs> yeah, he's just the person having, having an active sex. life is totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come he's, on, uh, man. Okay. He is like okay. stealing drugs out of the ambulance, which is pretty pathetic. It would be if you didn't have a fucking brain tumor, though. Like, I don't know. I don't. I think he's just doing it because he likes to get high, man. I don't. Oh, that really? was no, what I, I was, was because he was a horrible was... headache from the brain tumor. <laughs> yeah, me too. I thought so oh, okay. too. Because well, he taught, like at the beginning, he's like, oh, I'm hungover, I'm crazy hungover, but he finds out that it's not that. It's a yeah, tumor. it's like the he's like, man, this hung, hangover is hitting me a lot harder than it normally does. But yeah, he's, he's got a fucking brain tumor. Now his his friend doesn't know that, and he assumes what you just described, which is that he's yeah. turning into a junkie. Yeah. And from his friend's perspective, I would agree with you. But like just knowing what we know about his his medical situation, I find like when he they have that conversation where he's like. It's like, don't become a junkie now or whatever. And his friend's like, I'm fine. It's like, yeah, I, I can see somebody doing it that way where it's like, like if we work together, the three of us work together or whatever, I found out I had a fucking brain tumor and was not trying to like bother you guys with it because your daughter was missing. Then maybe I would just be kind of cagey about that and be a little irritated when you press me on it. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't, maybe there's no cooter. Yeah, I don't think there is. I don't. There's yeah. not nobody besides the cop even really hit that one like cadence for me. You know? There's not a lot of people, yeah, that we spend are, a lot I of mean, time with. You, at you, least it's tough to say like somebody like like the the tribesmen or something. Like how are you? Gonna I say guess that? like the KKK member is the only one that kind of. Yeah, but we. Yeah. I mean, for obvious he's a piece reasons, of he's a piece of shit. But we <laughs> yeah. don't know anything about that person, True, right? Yeah. And he all we know is that he a guy showed up in his living room like a ghost. Yeah, and he chased him out and was going to hurt him for being in his house twice. Like, yeah. I kind of find that difficult to be too mad about. Yeah. Okay. In and of itself, the, the, the white yeah. supremacy thing is a whole different issue. Okay, Randy, yeah. Mr. Sympathizer. Over there. Oh, yep, wow. that's me. <laughs> big white supremacist sympathizer. I'm just teasing. Big white Randy. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> big, I don't think. Big that. white Randy. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the big white block. Um, I, yeah, I don't think it's a cooter in this movie. Um, we tried. Randy's more of a translucent. Big translucent. That's accurate. <laughs> Unless I'm in the sun for 30 seconds. Um, well, let's go ahead and uh, let our hair down. We're getting into the social hour and we're talking about what we've been watching this week. Hey, gang. What, what you been, been watching? watching? Randy, what you been watching? Well, it's been a fucking hellish week for me in terms of work to accomplish so aside from like the usual diet of just like whatever music videos and reaction videos to shows i've seen a million times and shit like that that i have playing while i work um the only thing that i've really sat down and watched has been wandavision and i forgot to bring that up last week but i I watched another episode this week i've been you know keeping my eyes on that thing and i am surprised how much i enjoy this show it's pretty good. I think it's got it's got this like it's very much got a very mystery element, very X Files element to it, but it's also like the way it's presented is so stylistically perfect. <laughs> um, I don't want to get too deep into it because like the especially like this new episode really sort of like kind of opened up some some doors for the the plot and how it works and what's going on and all the things. But it's very much a central mystery sort of show that I don't think we're gonna get full answers to um, until. You know, I, I don't know, maybe not the end of the season, but certainly not right away. We're on episode four and we're just starting to scratch the surface with what's really going on. But the way it's presented is so fun and so interesting. I like it. I, I like it quite a bit. And I, I I can see some of the stories they're drawing from from the comics. I can remember some of those things. And I, I at least I think so. And I'm pretty pleased with the way they're handling it. So it's it's a tough show to talk about because it's a huge cultural touch touchstone, and I don't want to spoil a thing, but I think it's worth a watch. And that's coming from somebody who is very much medium on a lot of the Marvel shit. Nice, yeah. That trailer looks really fucking cool, and I've only heard good things. I fully intend to watch it, um, but I have not gotten around to it. You, you, I think, are probably similar to me in the fact that I'm somewhat 
like I like some Marvel movies, but I'm I'm not like a Marvel head or anything like that. Yeah. So if you like it, then I, I I'm sure I will. Yeah, I have gripes with the whole MCU, but I don't, I, and I hate talking about it because it's just, I don't know, it's just a tired conversation for me. But yeah. when I like them, I like them, and I think that so far, unless something goes catastrophically wrong. I think I'm going to be pretty pleased with this show as a series, um, at least through the end of the season. So. Sweet. Anything else? No, really nothing Nothing to speak of. <laughs> I'm sorry All to right. say. I, I have played some Tetris 99 on my way to <laughs> sleep at night. So, yeah, that's that's the extent of my entertainment engagement. Right. Juice, what you been watching? My watch list has been pretty slim too, honestly. I've been watching a shit ton of King of the Hill clips on YouTube. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Posted one of my faves in the Slack. Um, I've been like that. But of course, they always just keep suggesting to you. I'm always like, hey, it's two minutes. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. And so I just got caught up in that freaking whirlwind. Um, I am still <laughs> chugging through damn sweet home. And it's good enough, but it just seems to go on forever. Um, I think I'm close to finishing it. Uh, that's that Korean show that's kind of like uh, like Resident Evil on um, Netflix. I fully intend to do a mini episode on it as soon as I can damn finish it. So um, that's still trucking along. And uh, I got to go see... Saint Maud. Saint Maud. Saint Maud. The new uh, film from A twenty four that uh, got pushed back from last year, right? like for the yeah. wide release, right? Yeah. yeah. So A twenty four. Um, it's uh, it's very much in their horror style, um, like a blend between like a Hereditary and The Beach kind of feel to it. Um, it's got a lot of uh, religious. Um, themes going on in there um and it was good it was i mean it was on par for their style and the way that they kind of have movies crafted um in their kind of horror genre very art housey very some wild shit going on but i enjoyed it and it was fun to go to the movies got to go with bob and old mikey from let's get physical media um and watch that and that's that's really about it Actually, I don't, I haven't watched anything else. Bob, yo, what you been watching? What do you think, of old Saint Mod? Saint Mod's pretty good. I, we might end up doing a full blown podcast on it here at some point uh, uh, if we can fit it in the schedule. Um, so you know, I keep it light and spoiler free. Overall, it's 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 good. It's a solid uh, installment in the A twenty four like art house horror subgenre. You know, they sort of like corner the market on that sort of thing, um, and it's it's good it's it's uh, short and sweet i, I want to say it was like 85 minutes long it's 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 a it's a quick tight little movie yeah i was surprised uh, when it ended i was like oh that's it yeah it's only got a handful of characters real small cast real low key um but uh playing with some pretty cool themes and it is uh it was stressing me out it's kind of a stressful movie but <laughs> in a good way not a bad way um so check it out if you are able to um, other than that, I, I watched a movie called Daughters of Darkness. I picked this up on 4K uh, this past week. Uh, it's from 1971. It is a, a vampire movie. Uh, Joe Bob showed this way back in his original uh, The Last Drive-In Marathon uh, on, what was it, like June 13th, 2018, which was really supposed to be the last one he did, and then I broke the internet. Uh, this was like the only movie that I didn't watch of that marathon, and I think they pulled it off Shutter, so I just never could. Um, so it's my first time seeing this. Pretty cool story. It's about this like newlywed couple and they take a vacation. Um, they, they're going on their honeymoon and they stay at this like really fancy hotel sort of in the middle of nowhere. And there's this really um, wealthy uh, lady that like comes to stay. She's like a countess and she's got uh, like her aide with her, this young woman that like helps her out. And they just like take a liking to this couple. And of course, uh, you know, they turn out to be vampires and she wants to like have this couple like just be part of her little coven um so she's like following them around and like courting them and uh it's it's they're just being manipulated basically to and they slowly start to turn on one another and you know blood murder mayhem all that stuff um it's uh that's it's a solid little thriller and it, it gets wonky towards the end but i'd recommend checking it out especially if you can find the the uh, joe bob um, interstitials. I'm sure he had some cool stuff to say about it. 
Um, so yeah, good shit. Check that out. Also, I watched Jaws again because why not? Jaws fucking slaps. It's so early, Bob. I know. Um, I like have that. a daddy kink. Ha! <laughs> Whoa, Bob, save it for the Hotline that's, Kings. That's Jaws the new bum. That's goddamn. Um, when did I say that? Do you remember when I said Man, that? when didn't you say that? When did, where did that come Feels from? like I can't turn Honestly, around without telling me about your that, daddy. Tell me that every day. You're very <laughs> proud of it. I just can't yeah. shut up about my daddy king. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. I've been meaning to pull that one for so <laughs> long, and finally I remembered to send Randy the, the time Well, stamp. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got some good bumps, Bob. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, Revisited Jaws. It's still as good as it ever was. Duh. Uh, also, I watched You Got Mail for the first time ever. I've never seen that movie before. It's great. It's a great little, like, You Got Mail? Mail? Yeah, first time. First time. You want candles to make your room smell mossy? I fucking loved that no. fucking Steve Zahn performance. You don't remember that shit? Yeah. Oh, it's the very, Steve Zahn. Yeah. It's a very off-the-cuff thing. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, you get a, a dash of Steve Zahn in that movie, and he is just a damn delight in anything and everything that he's in. I don't um, remember really anything about that movie except Steve Zahn, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's a good movie, I think. But yeah, Steve Zahn, he, he mentions early on something about the internet. Because this is from like 1999, I want to say, is when the movie came out. So it's like early internet and uh, you know, t- Tom Hanks. And, and you know, there's like an online romance, basically, is what the movie's about. And Steve Zahn just says, like, oh, the internet's like just another way for girls to break up with you or something like that. And it's just like real off the cuff, Steve Zahn. I don't know. Shit cracks me up. It's good. Check it out. That's really all I've been watching. Though. I cannot believe we're talking about You've Got Mail on this podcast. It is uh, uh, it is one of Alice's favorite we, movies. I had to watch it. Hey, you know, had to do it. Power, power to you. You know, yeah. we reviewed Ghost on here. I guess I should we that <laughs> did a full episode <laughs> on Ghost, and you know how I feel about it. Oh, my darling, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a righteous brother. <laughs> is that that's how the lyric goes? That's how it goes. They talk about being righteous brothers, and then they talk about paying their taxes and filling out their 401ks. <laughs> that's great. That sounds phenomenal. Uh, that's all I've been watching. Uh, we do have one more segment to get to. It is the Hotline Scream. Let's do it. Hotline Scream. If you are listening and would like to call in and leave us a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. We prompted everybody last week about the Hotline Kings. We asked people to call in and let us know uh, what turns you on, what gets you going. We got one voicemail this week. Didn't really have anything to do. I have a daddy kink. Didn't have anything to do with daddy kink. Ah, keep it in your shorts. God damn. (laughs) There's no daddies here. Why? Well, let's what? not say that. <laughs> well, no <laughs> legitimate daddies. Hi. <laughs> we'll get Montel Jordan on the case. Uh, what's his name? Fuck it. Montel <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> what is that fucker's name? <laughs> Just Montel, I think, is what. This is how well, we do is... it. <laughs> I get. Uh, I can't remember that fucker's name. Who's the guy who did the "You're Not the Father"? Who is that? Mari? Is that? No. Maury. Is that Maury? I think it is. Uh, I get those names it? mixed up. I'm looking it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, that sounds uh, right. The uh, the other guy did it too, right? They all, all feel like Springer. All those I mean, yeah, but one guy made it his whole deal. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was Maury Povich. Yeah, yeah, yeah Maury yeah, Mor- Povich. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, didn't Springer <laughs> have a, like a security guard that was also called Maury or something like that? I don't know, but Jerry, if, if it wasn't like. It's Maury. It's Maury, yeah. 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 Okay. Maury did that. Jerry did every other horrible, ridiculous yeah. thing you can imagine. Yeah, like like the lady that was afraid of pickles, and they brought out a bunch of pickles. Cotton balls? The lady was afraid of cotton balls? <laughs> that cotton ball lady is terrified <laughs> of fucking cotton. Take the least dangerous of God, that'd be... You know, no, no, you know, we don't kink shame, we don't phobia shame either, so... <laughs> power to you. Shame. Power to you, non-pickle lady. May you, yeah. may you live in a cucumber-free world. God bless. Uh, yeah, so we do have one voicemail this week. Uh, not nothing to do with kinks. 
Um, but we are going to hear from uh, Justin. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey guys, it's Justin. I'm uh, calling back to defend my argument from last week about how I said uh, Halloween 2018 was the second best Michael Myers film. And here's why. So I'm going to start with my personal reason. It was actually the very first horror movie I ever saw when I was eight years old. So that's, that's, it'll always hold a special place in my heart for that reason. Now moving past that, as good as, uh, and I know, um, Justin mentioned uh, that um, two and four were better. And while I agree that four was definitely one of the better ones, and same with and going to the first one too, there's something about the way Dick Warlock portrayed Michael in that movie. I'm, I'm not saying by any means that one and four are bad portrayals of him. I mean, obviously you can't hate on the original, but um, I don't know. The way he moves more almost robot like, I guess, kind of gives him like just a slightly more creepy feel to me. I don't know. It's just, to me, it always seemed as the superior out of all of them. So that's, that's kind of my argument. It's not a super strong argument. It's more personal than anything. But, uh, so yeah, that's my reasoning. I just wanted to make my case. So there you go. Um, hope you guys have a good week and keep chilling as always. So I want to clarify. Yeah, yeah, I want to clarify. I, I got very confused. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. I was talking to Justin on Facebook about this, so I, I know what he's talking about. So he called in last week and said that Halloween 2018, he, he believes, is the second best Halloween movie in the franchise. And he, what he did not say in the voicemail, but what he did, he did tell me um, in a, a message when we were just talking about Halloween, uh, the franchise, um, Halloween 2 is his favorite. So in this uh, voice, okay, he's okay. talking about Halloween too. I see, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was talking about 2018 being the first horror movie that he watched at the age of eight. And I was like, well, wait a yeah. second, how Halloween old are too. you? Yeah, Yeah, because he leads with saying that that's <laughs> his second favorite and yeah, here's how old are you, 10 year old? Yeah. <laughs> Um, you should not be listening to us speak. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about teens. 10 years old. Please turn off your <laughs> podcatcher of choice. No. <laughs> Stop catching this pod, please. Yes. Start pitching. Drop the pod. God oh, heaven. Jesus. God in heaven. Um, but yeah, thank, oh, thanks for calling in. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was uncalled for. Ha- yeah. Uh, Halloween 2 is a fucking slapzilla of a movie. I, I think it's pretty fucking great. However, think, saying that it's the best in the franchise, I don't know. Kind, kind of a that's a ballsy statement, man. The original is not is, my feeling. <laughs> yeah, the original is tough to beat. Yeah, and then to put 2018 above the original, ooh, that's a that's a bold yeah, move. 20, yeah. yeah, the original doesn't crack the top two is uh, really bold. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, to each their own. Yeah. yeah, just happy to have you on the squad, guy. The old Justin squad. Sometimes you just need. Sometimes We're everywhere. You know, you know, you want Dick. You just want Dick and, and, and Warlocks. Warlock. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You need a little Dick Warlock. You got it. What a wild yeah. name. That is a person. Dick <laughs> Warlock. Yeah. That's that's on a that's an, on an IRS form somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably says Richard. Richard Warlock. <laughs> Please, Richard's my dad. Call him a Dick Warlock. Dick Warlock. Last name Warlock. That's a badass last name. That is a badass last name. They call me Bob Warlock <laughs> from now on. No, they don't. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, yeah, thanks for calling in, Justin. Again, if you're listening, want to call and leave us a voicemail to be featured on next week's show. Hit us up at 904 638 3231. Do you guys have any other uh, prompts you want to pose for next week? If you could go back in time to any time, if you could turn and carve something into a rock. Yeah, what time? I would want you to know choose? that. If you could, if what you could go back in time, um, is it permanent or choose? not? Though that's an important distinction. Uh, let's say it's not permanent. Let's say you're taking drugs. For you only get minutes. seven minutes. Let's say sure, you're taking drugs. Sure, seven yeah. minutes you and get head. seven minutes. Yeah. What time, if you could choose the time, which one would you go to for seven minutes? You can't do a whole lot in seven minutes. Apparently, you can do a lot if you're in synchronic. You see a lot, well, of, shit, a lot of shit. You can get into a lot really, of trouble, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I would uh, I would go as far as to say, please call in and tell us what you would carve on a rock. I want to know. 
Mm-hmm. I genuinely want to know if you could go back in time, where what what tree or rock or whatever would you carve, and what would it say? Tell me. <laughs> Good question. Um, yeah, call in and let us know. We'll play it on next week's show. Uh, speaking of next week's show, we're going to be back with a brand new re- review, as always. Uh, we're going to be hitting up our next Patreon pick. This one was chosen by Nicole, and the movie is The Peanut Butter Solution. Oh, shit. Our way out of hell, I see. Yeah, oh, Nicole. My God. <laughs> we let her we let her come uh, well, she, come back from hell uh, uh, just so that she, she could sign up for for a patreon you pick and, and she chose this movie so here we go she she brought this movie back with her i'm pretty sure this one yeah. is not of this earth <laughs> randy you have talked about this movie before i have it is a That's the only reason uh, I know it is a it. fun conversation piece i'll leave it at that for well, now cool all right yeah yeah, this yep. uh, this is like I guess a, a spooky movie for children it's from 1985. Never seen it before. I don't know. I guess yeah, we'll, we'll get I've into never it seen it before either. Only know because we're gonna have, talk about it. You're gonna have doorways open that you never thought would open. D- Damn. I have a daddy kink. Okay, <laughs> we're we're really getting some mileage out of this bump. I think we. Yeah, I think you're good. That's I'm a good bump. That's that's enough of that. <laughs> Uh, it's so clearly stated. Yeah, I wish. It, why did I enunciate so hard? You uh, wanted us to know. Yeah, you uh, just brag about it all the time. Look, man, it's okay. Have some pride. <laughs> One day you find the da- daddy of your dreams. There's a. Con- did you know that there's a? You know, there's like these games called dating simulators, and they're, like they're pretty common for for people to go and like it's a bunch of yeah. anime girls, and you try and date them. They made one what? that it's called Dating Daddy. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody knows the kink. I don't know what you're talking Dude, about. I'm like, you guys can pretend all you like. Nobody. <laughs> I actually know what you're talking about. I don't. Yes, of course you do, because this is common knowledge. You well, can't swing a dead cat so. without hearing about this shit. <laughs> and I swing dead cats constantly. Um, so you date it's, anime characters? It's a dating yeah, like, it's, it's like... It's like an RPG kind yeah, of Yeah, it's like an RPG. It's, it's okay, basically so it's like a, a choose-your-own-adventure story video yeah. game, yes. But there's one where it's called, like, what is it called? Daddy dating or something where you literally try and find the dad of your dreams. It's really disturbing in concept to me. Like, but people love this fucking thing. It's like a popular one, as I understand you, it. I you, like, you, you try to find a dad you want to bone? That's the, that's what Kind of, yeah. But they don't, they don't say that outright, I don't think. Huh. I mean, some of them I think probably do. But like, oh. like as a genre, I don't I think that that's intrigued. like necessary. <laughs> I oh, well, I mean, go. I got questions. Go get, tell, tell me where to go, Randy. Says Bob. Okay. Daddy King. I get kickbacks from Big Daddy Incorporated. Weird. <laughs> Big That's a Daddy. whole another thing. <laughs> I'd like to meet that dad. Did it? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, I guess do that too if you want to do that. But uh, more importantly, call in and leave us a voicemail. Also, don't forget to watch the Peanut Butter Solution. Get ready for next week's episode. Um, and that's it. That's all we got. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. Send us an email through our website, straight chilling podcast.com. If you want to join on the, on the daily conversations in the Slack channel, which has been popping off these past couple of days, um, just hit us up on one of those social media outlets and I'll send you a link to join in on the Slack channel. Fun. Uh, leave us a voicemail, watch Peanut Butter Solution. And until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. Behind the scenes, dream dad, dream dream dad, da- daddy, daddy simulator. <laughs> yeah. Randy, how much is that subscription that you've paid for? Oh, we can't hear Randy anymore. We can't hear Randy. Hold on. Oh, there you are. I'm just trying to. How do... Why is this not stopping? Please make this stop. What? The the sharing. I'm trying to get it to stop. Okay. Oh. <laughs>
No, nope, we see all your dirty secrets, Randy. It's going up on behind the scenes. This is what the people want. This is what they want. Oh, let's look there at all. Oh, dang it. I, I'm going to go back and look at all your other tabs you had open. It's all about <laughs> Synchronic, the film that we watch. <laughs> sure, go nuts. Sure. Want to go nuts? Yeah. All right, boys. That's a real fucking thing. Um, one thing I do want to bring up, and I've actually meant to bring this up. Already. Do you want this on behind the scenes? I'm still recording. No. 